How are you doing? Today is Thursday, March 28th, 2024. My name is Olivia and this is my YouTube channel, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today's video is an update progress video on cross-stitching and quilting. I do have one finished to talk about. Um, I'm really excited to do today's video, so I hope you guys will stick around and see what I've been up to. Well, here in my neck of the woods, we have been on spring break this past week. Um, my son Ethan is a senior in high school and he'll be graduating in a couple of months. And I remember when Allison was a senior, once we got past spring break, it went by super, super fast. And I am not ready to have him graduate high school already. I tried to convince him to go back to kindergarten and start all over again, but he told me no. <laughs> I'm just not ready to have another graduate and you know he'll be going off to college in the fall and I'm just it just it went by way too fast it really did remember when I first started doing these floss tube videos that's when Allison was a senior in high school and it seems like ages ago even though it wasn't I mean she's already you know been to four years of college and graduated and now I gotta start all over again <laughs> But it just went by way too fast. I don't, I don't understand. I would really give anything just to go back in time just for a little while and, you know, sit and watch them play. And I just, I'm, I'm very bummed. <laughs> but I am excited to see, you know, where he goes in the world and what he accomplishes. So anyway, so uh, we've been on spring break. The weather has been horrid here. Uh, rain on and off. So there hasn't been any activities. We've just stayed home. There's not really a whole lot to do in Oregon this time of the year anyway. So just kind of a, you know, a boring spring break. I liked it because I was able to work on some things. So I was cool with it. However, while I was working, I was able to watch a little bit of floss tube. I still have a whole lot loaded up into my queue to watch. But there was one floss tube channel I forgot to mention in my last video. Um, I felt awful that I forgot to bring up that I had watched her because I absolutely love her. And that is Catherine Adrian stitching in costume. Uh, at the beginning of her video, she did this where she had um, dressed up in a beautiful historical gown and she was outside in her garden with her sweet little pup and she was stitching and it was just so cool and I loved watching that and you know seeing her you know out in the garden and just it was a lot of fun. Um, I would love to go to her house because I would want to see if she would let me try on a beautiful ball gown. <laughs> But I watched uh, Catherine. I love her. Um, if you're not watching her, you definitely need to be. I also watched Megan, the white-eyed stitcher. Uh, my friend Michelle Cozy Egg. I loved her video um, at the beginning of it. Uh, at the beginning of um, at least the last handful of videos, um, she does where you kind of get like a snapshot into her day to day. So you know she'll show you know, maybe what's going on outside, what she's stitching, what she's reading, or what she's cooking, so, or baking, so it's always a lot of fun to, you know, watch her, uh, you know, just kind of to get that little snapshot into her life. I also watch Cross Stitch with Luda. I always love catching up with her. She's a beautiful cross stitcher. She stitches a lot of Mirabilia's, Nora Corbett's. She also um, works on a lot of the, um, uh, I can't think what it's called, but they, they came as kits. I want to say DMC Gold Collection, but I don't think that's the correct kit title. Uh, she does a lot of those, and then she was also showing some of the sampler charts that she had recently picked up. I also watched my friend Olivia B. I never miss one of her videos. Always love sitting down and seeing what she's working on. 
And then I did watch several videos uh, from Crafty Gaming Jamie. And I love watching her. She does a lot of full coverage. And I like seeing how she kind of breaks down um, her stitching, you know, how many stitches she'll stitch. Uh, she always works on some amazing full coverage. So, you know, definitely go and check her out as well. Um, I'll put a link to all the floss tubes that I've mentioned today down in the description. That way you can just click on it and go right to their videos. I did have a new start over the past two weeks. This one I started on the very first day of spring. Um, I decided to, um, Shell Cozy Egg had uh, shared the chart a couple of months ago and she mentioned that she was going to start it on uh, the first day of spring so I crashed her stitch along <laughs> and I decided to start it as well and that is At Home by Brenda Gervais. I just recently saw somebody finish this and it is gorgeous. I love it and I cannot wait to spend more time with this one. It is going to hang out in the mocking basket of whips for a little while before I get back to it but I'm really looking forward to it. I love it. It's just absolutely beautiful. And here is my very sad start. <laughs> so I when I bought the chart and the threads I bought it thinking that I had a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha which is what the model was stitched on. I always have a piece of vintage country mocha, or at least I thought I did. And then when I got ready to start this, I did not have a single piece that was big enough. And a vintage country mocha is one of those ones that anything you stitch on it, it's gonna look amazing. And definitely it's a good piece to have in your stash. So I definitely need to order a, another piece of that for some other project down the road. But I did find a piece of 40 count Wren by Picture This Plus. Uh, I actually, uh, 123 Stitch had it in stock a few months ago. It's really hard to come by. So when I saw that they had it available, I snapped up a big uh, fat quarter of it. Uh, I think this will look great on Wren. And I already love how the stitches look. So. At some point, I will get back to this because I would like to have it more um, in my rotation. The next project I worked on is The Houses of Hopgren Hollow by Caratel Samplings. I have been working on this block up here, which is block number four. Uh, I was able to finish my assignment for this month, and uh, my friend Yvette uh, broke this block up into four segments. We've completed three of four. So next month I will finish stitching the house and the block will be finished. I'm really looking forward to finally having an entire row of houses complete. And here is my progress. So I love it. Love, love, love that beautiful house. I'm going to love it even more when I put the roof on and then have the sort of side how, uh, the bit of side house that you can see. <laughs> but I love it. I think it's going to be my favorite block. I love the color of the house. I just love it all. It's just so beautiful. I definitely would live in that particular house in the houses of Hawker and Hollow. <laughs> I love working on this one and I'm so happy to have the assignment done uh, because I spent so much time working on Elizabeth to get her finished. I sort of started to fall behind on everything and so to get this one done I was very relieved. <laughs> so I'm stitching the houses of Hawker and Hollow on a piece of 40 count heritage by Picture This Plus and I am using DMC threads stitching at one over two. And here is a little bit of a close-up. I'm sorry if you can hear Fred. I'm gonna keep going. He hears the garbage man outside and so he's got to go investigate. So love this block so excited to work on it next month and then just to have that row of blocks finished is is so fun um so i've been working on this one this is year two and uh i think this will be a several year project but i'm okay with that i love working on it so much fun the next project i worked on is his eye on the sparrow by heartstring samplery so i started this on leap day of this year and this is going to be my project for the next four-ish years 
<laughs> I am stitching this with my friend Michelle Cozy Egg, and I'm so very grateful that she agreed to stitch it with me. And she has this whole top section done and then sort of down this way. I just love it. So that has been my Saturday stitch. So this Saturday will be the final Saturday that we work on it. And then it switches to Sunday for the foreseeable future. And this is the progress that I've made. So I've worked on this for four, four days, four evenings progress, I think. There was leap day. And has there been three Saturdays since then? Maybe. So this is how far I got. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, this is so tiny, you know, because I got to fill up this whole thing with motifs. <laughs> so I have a long ways to go, but I love working on this. It is absolutely so fun. I love the linen, which is 40 count, one more reproduction by Be Stitch Me. And I am using the called for thread, stitching it one over two. I love it. So I was finally able to finish the cow. Um, he looks tiny, but there are so many stitches and I did make a mistake and I had to rip out part of it one day, but I finally got him done and then was able to work on a couple of the smaller motifs. So I love this. I know that every single video for the next four years, you guys will be seeing this. So I hope you guys don't mind watching it slowly grow. I love working on it. So much fun. I always, you know, I work on it on Saturdays and then when it's time to put it away, I always think I cannot wait until the next time rolls around that I get to work on this. It's so much fun. And it'd be nice if on the particular day when I'm supposed to stitch it, I could sit down and just spend hours working on it, sort of get, you know, some more motifs done and get a little bit farther. Hasn't quite worked out yet. It seemed like there's always something going on or you know, I, I might have it out to work on and then I end up having to do something else. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, as I go along, I'll be able to dedicating a little bit more time during the evening when I work on it to get a little bit farther along. Because right now I'm only averaging about an hour and a half in the evenings when I stitch. So I definitely would like to get a little bit more time. <laughs> My next project comes out of the Hello Autumn book by Teresa Kogut, and it is called Folksy Thomas. So this is one that I am uh, stitching assignments with a group of friends, and I have decided that next month I am going to stitch until it's finished. So it'll be nice to cross this one off the assignment list, but this is how far I got. And I love working on him so much. It's gonna be so stinking cute when it's done. <laughs> so I basically, I only worked on this for two evenings and I basically focused on the vine that you see. So when I pick this back up again, I'm just gonna go for it and I'm gonna try to get it done. I hope it won't take too many days to do. Uh, I remember Elizabeth took about three extra days and I think it was eight in total. And that definitely put me behind. And I would imagine that this one probably will put me a little bit behind again, but I would love to get this one done. And I just, I love working on him. I, you know, he's a lot of fun. I love working on him. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count parchment by Weeks Dye Works. And I am using the called for threads and I'm stitching it one over two. I love it. The last couple of evenings, I've been working on Sarah Stewart Hardman by Needlework Press. So I started this back in November on my birthday, and I'm working on it with my friend Yvette. And because it was uh, my birthday start, I she told me I needed to assign the assignments. So I've been keeping it very, very light because, you know, we've got a full uh, deck of projects that we're working on. So this project, we just, you know, we've just been doing little bits at a time. So for March, we just uh, stitched a couple border flowers. And then this motif right here, we just did the outline of it, not the over one stitching. Uh, this particular project, I will not work on next month. We bumped it to May. Um, that way, Yvette can finish her Elizabeth Furness. So when May rolls around, uh, the projects will be, or the the assignments will be 
much larger. But here's my progress. <laughs> so I worked on this for the last two evenings. I was able to complete the assignment, except right about the time I was getting ready to stop for the evening, I discovered that this border flower right here is off one stitch. So tonight I will put this back on the Q-snap and unpick it and restitch it. Although if it wouldn't have been 11 o'clock last night, I, I totally would have done it, but I was getting way too tired. <laughs> so here is the progress that I have made so far, and I'm looking forward to getting back to her in May and you know working on a little bit bigger chunks on her because I would like to get her done by the end of the year or the first part of next year. So I'm going to be stitching Sarah Stewart Hardman in memory of my two times great grandmother. So I definitely will be doing some personalizing as I go along. But I love this piece. It's so beautiful. And I've recently seen a couple of people finish her and it's, it's beautiful, beautiful. So I'm stitching Sarah Stewart Hardman on a piece of 40, no, 36 count vintage buttercream by Lakeside Linens. And I am using classic color works threads, stitching it one over two. I love her. She's so pretty. Love her, love her. <laughs> Last project I worked on was The Shores of Hawk Run Hollow by Caratel Samplings. I am working on block number one. It is a restart for me. I don't think I'm going to get this done by the end of March. <laughs> I tried really hard, but the end of March is approaching and I don't think it's going to make it. <laughs> So this is the progress that I've made so far, and I've been working on it on Friday nights. Uh, a group of us do a Hawk Run Hollow Zoom meetup, and this has been the project that I've been working on. I And then once the Zoom meeting's over, I usually will work on it uh, for the rest of the evening. So it's coming along. I'm down to the water section, so there's just going to be a lot of fill-in, and then of course to complete the block, stitch the words, and then restitch the sum. So we'll see. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count prairie grass by Seraphim Fabrics and I am using the called for DMC that's listed in the chart and I'm stitching it one over two. I really love working on it though. I love the linen so very much. If I knew that I could order prairie grass from Seraphim and it would come and it would look exactly like this, I would buy more of it because I absolutely love this color. I think it would be perfect for a Halloween piece, a Christmas piece, a winter piece. It's just so beautiful. I love it. Love it, love it. So uh, this Friday, I will be working on Shores again. And you know, if I'm really lucky, maybe I can get the water all filled in. Uh, because then the words and the sun, it'll go really quick after that. So we will see. My friends told me not to rush, but I definitely feel like I need to get this block done because I'm sure that they are anxious to get back to shores and start the second block. <laughs> I did have a finish over the past two weeks. This one I started back in February and I just kind of picked it up here and there and I decided I need to get this done before Easter this year. And that is Spring Awakens by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. So I started this, I think it was the weekend after Ethan's birthday when his friends all came over and spent the night. And I was able to get this bunny completely done. And then after that, I've just kind of picked it up when I've had a chance. But I decided it's time to get this done. That way I can have it finished before Easter. So I still need to fully finish it. I'm hoping to do that in the next couple of days. I'm just gonna do a pillow finish for the trench bowl. And then I will leave it out until the end of April. Um, some things will get put away after Easter is over, but a lot of it, a lot of the more spring stuff and bunnies and stuff will stay out until the end of April. So I'm so happy that I have this done. <laughs> so I stitched Spring Awakens on a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha. 
and I used a variety of threads. Um, most of them were the called for, but I did have to substitute out um, three or four over dyed. And all I did was kind of match it to what the color of the chart was. So I think uh, the dress on the bunny is supposed to be a little bit darker. Mine ended up being a little bit more tealy, but I do like it. So very, very happy to have this one done. I did get a little bit of mail over the past couple of weeks. Uh, this card arrived last week, at the beginning of last week. And I have no idea who sent it to me, but they left me such a sweet note. And they had watched the video I had done a couple videos back where I, uh, you know, things had kind of not been going very well and I was trying to stay positive. So I had asked everybody to, you know, tell me a funny story or a joke or, and so many of you guys did and I loved reading through all of it. Uh, but this particular person uh, had watched that video and then um, they sent me this card and they sent me a pile of jokes and you know just like little cartoons and you know little little cute memes and it was just it was so fun to read through all of this i i had just the biggest chuckle reading through each and every one of the little the little things that they had included and Whoever did it took a whole lot of time to, you know, to do this, to print things out and, you know, to cut everything out. And it just, it was so fun to read through all of it. It definitely cheered me up. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to keep all of these together. And anytime I need a pick me up or anything like that, I'm going to definitely uh, read through all of them again. So thank you to whoever it was who sent me that. And she also included this card here. It's a blank card, so I will be able to use it, but it was by Birds of a Feather, and I, I just loved it. So it's such a fun little envelope to get, in the mail, to get in the mail, and I have, again, every time I need a little bit of pick-me-up, I just kind of go and flip through it. So thank you to whomever took the time out of your day to do that for me. It was so very kind of you, so thank you so much. The Fat Quarter Shop sent me a package of items that are available now for purchase, and I will put a link to the Fat Quarter Shop down below. The first item is a, a quilt pattern. It's called Color Me Crayons by It's So Emma. It is jelly roll friendly. Next is a quilt pattern called Chantilly. I really love this one, it's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Uh, poinsettias. So all of these are by It's So Emma. Uh, peppermint Bark, which I am a huge Indigo and Cheddar fan, and this one is pretty awesome. <laughs> a quilt pattern called Honey Crisp. Cross Trainer, Daisy Patch, that one is very pretty and very springy, and Early Bird, and there is a new little, um, a new little gadget, it is called Cloth Biddy, and it's, so these are two magnets and what you do on your cross stitch, you know, when you've got like a big chunk of linen, you roll it up and then you attach this to the top and bottom and it holds your um, linen for you. I use, I use hair clips for mine. <laughs> so I definitely am going to have to give these a try. I've seen a few people use them, you know, when they post photos on Instagram or if they are doing their YouTube videos, they might show it in the Q-Snap with the cloth bitty. So I'm definitely gonna try those out and you know see how they work. But all of those items are available now on the Fat Quarter Shop's website. From the Fat Quarter Shop, I also received the Cross Stitch Stitch Quarterly Subscription Kit in the mail. And this is what the uh, subscription for this spring time of the year is. And it is called Bunny's Bakery. Very cute. 
So if you are curious about the subscription, uh, it comes four times a year. It's usually seasonally related. So this would be for spring. And the kit usually has, of course, the chart, the DMC threads. It also comes with a needle. This one has a, um, I cannot think what they're called, <laughs> needle minder, and the Ada. It also usually might come with something, you know, a few extras. And for this month, it came with a mini Mad for Plaid project bag. Very cute. And then it always is put in an adorable uh, project keeper. <laughs> My brain is just like flatlining right now. Project bag. <laughs> I probably should have eaten lunch. I think that's what's going on. My, my brain is telling my stomach it's time to eat and that's all it can think about. But um, so very cute. In fact, this one I just noticed has a little bunny hair. Very, very cute. So if you're at all interested in the subscription, you can sign up at any time. Uh, the next one I'm guessing will be a release sometime in the summer and it, it'll usually be some sort of a summer theme. So they are a lot of fun to get just such a cute little kit that comes in the mail four times a year. So thank you so very much to the Fat Quarter Shop for sending the uh, subscription kit my way, as well as all of the beautiful uh, quilt patterns and the cloth bitty. If you're at all interested in you know checking any of this stuff out, I will put a link to the Fat Quarter Shop's website down below. In my last video, I did have a giveaway. And as always, thank you to everyone who played along. If I call your name, what you will need to do is contact me via email and send me your address and I will get your prize out in the mail to you. There were three prizes up for grabs and all three were mystery prizes. So I'm the only one that knows what's inside each one of the envelopes. The first one was for seasonal or smalls uh, cross stitch charts. And the winner is Kathy Berry. 7219 and that is your YouTube name. I will also scroll it across the bottom. Number two was for the mystery package of samplers and the winner is Donna Hudson 2067. And number three was the mystery quilt patterns and the winner is Terry Croixton. I'm pretty sure I gloriously mispronounced your name. Uh, 3136. And again, I'll scroll it across the bottom. Congratulations to all of the winners. Today's video also has a giveaway. I decided what the heck. <laughs> there are two prizes up for grabs and what you will need to do to be eligible is like the video, be a subscriber, and answer the question down below. Prize number one is for the Bunny Bakery kit by It's So Emma. So you will, uh, if you win this, you'll get the chart and you'll get the threads, Ada and needle minder and needle to stitch it. So if you're interested in this one, it is number one. And number two is for all of the quilt patterns that I just showed that arrived from the Fat Quarter Shop. So if you're a quilter and you love quilt patterns, uh, this prize is for you. So this will be number two. So the question that you will need to answer down below is, what was the last project you finished? So for me, the last project I finished was last night and it was a quilt that I'm gonna show here in a second, but it can be any project, any project that you finished last. Let me know down below in the comment section and in my next video, I will pick a winner. Uh, make sure you indicate which ones you're interested in. Number one is the cross stitch kit and number two is the, uh, the quilt patterns that I showed in today's video. As always, thank you so very much for playing along. So over the past two weeks, I didn't really get a whole lot of time to do any quilting for myself. Uh, last week I was working on primitive goods for my Etsy shop. Uh, I was primarily focusing on Easter bunnies and eggs. Um, I still have some of 
a few left in my shop if you're interested. I will insert a picture of what it is that I was working on, but that's kind of what took up all of last week for me. And then this week I decided that I wanted to finish this particular quilt. I have so many amazing quilts that um, are waiting for me to put together. And I just decided to start with the first one on top. It comes out of the big book of Civil War quilts. So back in 2022, my husband had given me a gift certificate to a local quilt shop, The Speckled Hen in Aurora, Oregon. And I had already, uh, when I had been there the time before, I had saw, I had flipped through this book and I saw the quilt pattern in it. And so when I had that gift certificate, I decided that I needed to get the book and he helped me kit it up. So the quilt is called Gettysburg Sun. It is by uh, Carol Hopkins. Carol Hopkins designed this quilt and she did it to commemorate the three day long Battle of Gettysburg, which was fought under the hot July sun in 1863. The quilt, the warm radiance of this quilt suggests happier days. And if you feel playful, keep in mind that the sun's centers and points don't always have to match. However, I did not take that to heart. <laughs> If mine did not match, I ripped it out and restitched it, <laughs> but <laughs> I love this one. So uh, I started a couple of videos back. I had three of the 12 blocks put together. So I decided to focus on finishing all of the blocks. Lots of tiny little pieces, but I absolutely love how it turned out. So I've got indigo and cheddar. I also have some yellow blocks, some black in there. The sashing is green. All of these are Civil War reproduction. Try to kind of make it look a little bit like the, um, the quilt photo. Uh, and if I would have been able to find the sashing fabric or the border fabric that went around the outside, I totally would have put it on. But I would imagine whatever fabric that she had used, most of them are good and out of print now. But I love how it turned out. And I'm hoping next week to throw it on the quilt machine and quilt it because I want to have it out and enjoy it. So I love, love how it turned out. Love it, love it. So it was fun. A lot of little pieces. So while I was putting it together, I watched a lot of historical documentaries that I watch. And I also on YouTube, they have the UK version of Who Do You Think You Are? So I watched a lot of that while I was assembling these blocks, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And I absolutely am so thrilled that it is finished. So again, the Gettysburg Sun quilt comes out of the big book of Civil War quilts. If you, if you love Civil War quilts and you can get a hold of this book, I highly recommend it. It is just full, beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful, fabulous quilts to be made. And I know that there are several in here that I would love to, to make. Um, right now, I told myself I have to focus on the ones that I already have waiting, but maybe I can reward myself down the road and you know pull one of those and then work on it. Um, the quilts are all different sizes, lap size. I think there's a couple that are even bigger than a lap size all the way down to like doll quilts. So such a great, great book if you are at all interested in Civil War quilts. I think Martingale is the company that went out of business. So you might have to look on these on the secondary market. I should have checked into that before I did the video, but I there was one book company that just recently went out of business and the majority of those books are only available on the secondary market. But if you can get a hold of a copy, I would highly, highly, highly recommend this one. Lots of wonderful quilts inside. Well friends, that brings me to the end of today's video. If you've stuck around for this length of time, thank you so very much. I do very greatly appreciate you. If you would like to see what I'm up to in between my videos, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and I do have a Facebook page called Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. I will put a link to both of those places down below in the description box, as well as everything that I have shown and shared today will be listed down there as well if you're at all curious. The plan for me will be to be back in two weeks. So I hope that you will come back then to see what I have been up to. 
Uh, I hope you have a very happy Easter if you celebrate and a wonderful beginning to your April. And I think that's the end. <laughs> so now I just need to say goodbye. I don't know why it's always so awkward to say goodbye. Like at the beginning of the video, it's always awkward to like start it. And at the end, it's always like awkward to end it. <laughs> So I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.